In this Photoshop design tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to do a vintage logo in Photoshop. So, hi guys, welcome back to a brand new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny and you can find me on Facebook at Retard Pro. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to do a simple vintage logo in Photoshop. We're going to work with some text and one or two little elements with a marking tool. Yep, not too complicated. And now, guys, if you want to see something specific on this channel, do hit me up down below in the comment box, leave your feedback there, or email me to this little address and let me know what you want to see on this channel. Anyways, enough of the talking, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so over in Photoshop, as you guys can see, I've got two different groups here open again. First of all, the text and then also the background. Now, if you guys are completely new to this channel, have a look. There are more tutorials where I just go right away into the logo design. In the last tutorials, I keep on explaining a little bit the background because my subscribers requested this. Okay, so simply, the background consists of a few different layers here and also a main image as well. But if you don't want to replicate this, because I'm not going to show each and every individual step here, you can also download this for free from my website. Just follow the link down below in the description. Okay, but if you want to know, want to know how I did this, let's talk quickly through this. So basically I started out just again with a black background layer in order for the white logo to stand out a little bit in the end if I even add some more stuff on top. Then second step that I did here is again took in a normal image, just took the opacity down to 82%. And also, as you guys can see, there's a little small white thing here. This is called a smart object, the layer. If you want to know more about this, have a look again on the channel. There's a 101 playlist for beginners where you can learn more about this. Now, what I did here was basically converted to, to a smart object and then added the Gaussian blur filter effect on top just because I wasn't sure if I want to have it a little bit blurred so the logo stands out or if I will take it back to normal. But I decided against it, I wanted to let it stand out and look a bit more rustic and vintage as well. Then on top of that, I've also added again a curves adjustment layer here, just to give it a bit of a vignetting effect. If you wanna know more about this, have a look again in this tutorial, where I teach more about how to do this effect, again with the marking tool, again with feather 250 pixels, and then soften and add a curves adjustment layer on top of it, and create a little bit of a vignetting effect here. You guys can see that I took down just the dark pixels a little bit. Okay, then I did exactly the opposite. I brightened the center as well. I also teach that in the tutorial, showing you guys from A to Z how I do it. Again, brighten this up a little bit. Then on top of that, just a bit of a brightness and contrast. Brightness down to minus 38, so the black logo shines through even more, or the white one, on a black surface and again contrast to 41. And then also over here another layer, another selective color adjustment layer. And in the neutral tones I just played a little bit with color. As you guys can see it goes a little bit more to the orangey side, orange purple over here. So basically cyan minus nine and magenta plus three. Yeah, and that's basically it. But if you don't want to replicate this, have a look again in the description down below. I've linked everything for you. Great, so let's get right away into this vintage logo now. So I'm gonna move this all the way down to the bottom so we can start fresh and you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm gonna select the text tool here from the text toolbox or just the toolbox. I'm gonna to make a nice big selection and first of all write here vintage. So that's basically the company name or your name, whatever you want to create. I'm gonna write this all in capital letters and make this nice and big. And we've got the right font selected already. It's called Market. Deco, you guys can also find that in the description down below. Then I'm gonna first of all space it and also put the right size into it. So I'm gonna go with something like around 70%, 71, 72, something around there. Let's go with 71. And also I'm gonna work a little bit with my tracking here in the character box. If you guys don't have this character box, please go to window and select the character box over here. Okay, minus 80, that looks good to me already. Last step that I'm still gonna do is make the V a little bit bigger so it just looks a bit better. And also I have a bit of space to hide my slogan again. So let's make this a bit bigger, bigger, something like that. That should do 85 pixels there. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna accept it. And maybe I'll still change that, but I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna move this somehow into the center just with the move tool. You can just select the move tool here. 
And I'm also going to go to View, New Guides, and going to create some help layers again. Horizontally, 50%, and say OK, like I usually do with all tutorials. And again, New Guide vertically as well. And if you're new again to the videos, have a look on the channel, the 101 Playlist for Beginners. Okay, with the cursors, I'm just trying to space this somewhere into the center. I'm also doing this quite quickly, so take a bit more time when you guys de do these tutorials. Then as well, text tool again, nice big selection here, and we have a bit of space now for the slogan. So I'm basically going to hide the slogan now on top of the text. Normally you put it underneath, but for this tutorial, I'll put it on top. So also I'm going to write now the best bike garage, okay, and you guys can't see it because it's obviously too big. So I'm going to make it nice and small, and let's see, here is a space bar missing, so the best bike garage. And is this a double? No. Okay, select all of it again, and first of all, I'm going to change the font. So this time, I'm going to go with Nexa. Let's just find it again. Okay, Nexa Lite. You guys can also find that in the description down below again. Then also, let's play a little bit here with the size. I'm going to go with like a 7 or 8. Let's select seven first of all. I'm quickly going to take the move tool and move it down here. Yep, and that size, I'm actually happy with that. With the cursors, I'm just trying to space it into the right position. Take the text tool again, select it, select all of it, and going back to the character box. Now I'm going to stretch the character box, sorry, the tracking, all the way until the E's end up here. Okay, let's also take again a ruler, trying to see if that matches up. You guys are also welcome to take a bit more time when you do this. Like I said, I'm rushing quite quickly through this. Okay, and with the move tool, just simply over with Z on the keyboard or the zoom tool. I'm going to zoom out a bit and move this up slightly. Okay, take this guideline here and just throw it out again. Great, so we've got our slogan right away on the top. Next up that I'm still going to do now is add just a little line underneath my vintage logo. So for that, I'm going to go and create a new little line here with the rectangular marking tool. Select that and make a nice big selection underneath here. And you can do this really roughly, actually. Okay, drop it, hit right-click inside of the selection and say fill. But this option is not available. Why? This is because I first have to create a new empty layer. And now I can work on this free empty layer. So again, right-click, fill, and with white foreground color, okay? Now I'm gonna press Command D on the keyboard in order to get out of the selection. Again, when you work with a uh, Windows computer, please press Control when I say Command, okay? So get out of the selection. And as well, I'm going to have a look. Maybe I'll make it a little bit thinner. So again, select the marking tool. So either you can select the right size already, or like me, go afterwards again in and delete out a little bit from this. So just made a selection over our current created line and deleted it with backspace. Okay, Command D out of the selection. Now I'm just going to move it over a little bit, a little bit higher. Okay, and also trying to match it up here in the end again. So take a guideline again, trying to place this here on the end. And then layer three, which is basically our line. I'm also renaming the layer sometimes, or mostly. Okay, <laughs> then just trying to make this even here at the back. And now I still want to get rid of this. So for that, I'm going to just use the pen tool in order for me just to make a little bit of a cheat here and to do it quicker. So select the pen tool from the toolbox over here, put an anchor point over here, one down here, one over here. You can also hold shift on the keyboard to make it nice and straight. Then go back up and over here as well. And if it doesn't look too good, you can always hold command, go to a last anchor point and remove this anchor point until you are happy with your lines. Now, right click and say, make a selection out of this. And if you're completely new to the pen tool, have a look on the channel. There's also a tutorial teaching you how to work with a pen tool. Now, once you're done with selecting or making a selection, it will ask you for the feather radius. Just hit zero and okay, and then take the marking tool, just select M on the keyboard, and move the selection all the way down until it matches up again with your letter and the bottom line, and hit delete. Okay, and then you just repeat the step, delete the rest from this line, and you can see everything is gone. Press Command D to get out of this selection. Zoom out, and you guys can see the line fits in nicely now. Now, last step again, Move Tool, and just with the cursors, you can move that up a little bit or stretch that a little bit. Okay, I'm also going to move it a little bit to the left. 
so it fits in here. And don't worry, yes, it won't fit here in the end anymore. It's very easy, just press Command T and transform this a little bit further again. Hit Enter and you should be good with that. Now, the next slogan that I'm still going to do here is also write a little since underneath it. So again, yep, so let's select the text tool once more. Make a nice big selection and I'm just going to write in capital letters since 1970 or something. So apparently that shop is open since 1970, but yeah, that's up to you. Then also I'm going to select also the same font again. Nixa something here. Let's just find it here, Nixa Lite. You guys can also find it again in the description down below if you're searching for it. Then first of all, I'm going to also select the font size. I'm going to go with like six or seven pixels and go to the tracking box and make this nice and big. So something around, let's have a look, 2000. Okay, I can make it even bigger, 2400, 2500. This is for me to just cover up everything from the line almost, but not completely, have a bit of depth length left and right here. So I'm talking about this little area over here and this little area over here. Or if you want to, you can make it from the beginning towards the end, then just push the character box, the tracking a little bit. So I'm just going to space it somewhere over here. And for me, normally I zoom out a little bit to get a feeling if everything leans left or right or if it fits nicely. And the guidelines are also irritating me. So I'm going to go back to view and clear the guides. Zoom out a little bit further, try to get a feeling for it. If it fits right, I'll keep and stick with that. If not, I will maybe go back in and try to make this bigger, smaller and push the character box and the tracking just a little bit until it feels right. But yeah, that's basically it. Last step, again, line, I'll stick that in with Vintage Synth and the Bike Garage, the slogan. Press Command G, put that together in a new group and call it Logo again. Okay, I'm going to take out our first logo here, just all the way to the top, so I can show you guys this is what we've created before, or I did, and this is my after. So a little bit refined, uh, and obviously I took not too much time to do this, so take a bit more time when you guys do these tutorials. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so guys, that's it for this tutorial. Super easy and simple. Anyone can do this. Also, if you enjoyed this content, don't forget to hit me up with a thumbs up there, share and subscribe because this is for everyone. Photoshop is for everyone. Okay guys, enough of this. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in the next tutorial. And if you want to see some more stuff on this channel, then just click on the right or on the left. Or left. Left, right, right, left, 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 right. There's a ton of more tutorials for you all waiting on this channel. Also, if you're completely new to this channel and don't have a cooking clue what's going on, have a look down below as a playlist for you, one-on-one -on -one for Photoshop beginners, and as well, an awesome course that you can enter right now. Yeah, so just click, click away.